Good morning. Welcome you to this, the fourth or fifth Sunday after Lent. Uh, glad that we have a lot of people today to worship with us as we prepare for our Lord to go to the cross. Before we have, uh, before we worship this morning, we have a couple announcements to make. Uh, there is a voters meeting uh, in between services. Uh, this serves as a regular voters meeting, but also a voters meeting where we will call, or we will seek to call, or vote to call um, a first and second grade uh, teacher uh, for the school. So if you can, please come to that voters meeting so that we can have a quorum uh, for that. Uh, it has pleased the Lord to call Sally Knuth home uh, to be with him. So as, you, uh, as we pray the prayers for the church, keep her in your hearts, keep her family in your hearts. Um, the Lord has called Sally Knuth home. Easter lilies, you can pick those up or, or order those. Order those. Order those today uh, for Easter. Easter is not too far away. Not too far away. So uh, I think there's something in the bulletin. Uh, there's something in the bulletin for that as well. Uh, I do have one more announcement to make, uh, and that's for me. As you know, uh, three weeks ago I was extended a call to uh, Emmanuel in uh, Bozier City, Louisiana. Uh, with, with great deliberation and a heavy heart, I will be accepting that call to Emmanuel in Bozier City. This was not an easy decision for me, but I had to think of, uh, I had to think of my family, and I had to think where God also wanted me at the time. This congregation will always have a, a place in my heart. Uh, it's the first congregation where I served and I was installed and ordained. Uh, my last sermon will be April 4th on Easter. So if you can, continue to pray for my family and pray for both congregations uh, as this is a time of transition for both of us. With that, let's begin with... I have to... <laughs> Pastor Yeager wanted to wait until the end of the service. And I asked him to make the announcement at the beginning. Sorry, I gotta compose myself. I asked him to make the announcement at the beginning so we could pray for him and his family in the transition, pray for the church he's going to and for our church as well. And I just wanna say, I'm gonna miss you. rise.
light and our life. Reading from the Book of Concord, Small Called Articles, Part 2, Article 1, Christ and Faith. The first and chief article is this, that Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, was put to death for our trespasses and raised again for our justification. He alone is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God has laid upon him the iniquities of us all. Moreover, all have sinned, and they are justified by grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus by his blood. Inasmuch as this must be believed and cannot be obtained or apprehended by any work, law, or merit, it is clear and certain that such faith alone justifies us. As St. Paul says in Romans 3, for we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of law. And again, that God himself is righteous and that he justifies him who has faith in Jesus. Nothing in this article can be given up or compromised, even if heaven and earth and things temporal should be destroyed. For as St. Peter says, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which, which we must be saved. Recorded in the Holy Bible, the book of Isaiah chapter 53, and with his stripes we are healed. Our Old Testament lesson for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, comes from Jeremiah, chapter 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Our epistle lesson comes from Hebrews chapter 5. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. 
Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is from St. Mark, chapter 10. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But, but now, now in these, these last days, days he, he has, has spoken, spoken to us by his Son.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text today comes from our Old Testament lesson, Jeremiah chapter 31. You may be seated. Dear friends, in the middle of a long hike or even a potential cardio exercise, have you ever just wanted to stop and take a second to catch your breath? A quick second to let your body catch up with your mind in order to finish the rest of the journey that lay ahead. And as you catch your breath, consider the oxygen that goes into your lungs and consider the temporary rest that invigorates the body to continue along the path in order to finish what you started. During our Lenten, se Lenten journey this season, we have been going over a sermon series on Wednesday called Return from Exile, written by a professor at the seminary in Fort Wayne. In this sermon series, we really focus on a journey from death to life. We realize that we are all just sojourners awaiting the end when God will call us back home to be with him and to be with those whom we love. And as we go on this journey, God continues to remind us of his promises by pointing us to the only hope we have in his son, Jesus Christ, and the cross he bears for us today. Hearing God's promise is refreshing to those who are in exile and a breath of fresh air to those who continue to sojourn. Dear friends, our Old Testament reading today is a breath of fresh air to those Israelites who were in exile in Babylon. In our Old Testament lesson, Jeremiah reminds the faithful of God's promise. He will not abandon them, and he has promised to restore them. More than that, God has promised to establish a new covenant. In this covenant, God will bring life and forgiveness through his word. In this covenant, God will bring salvation to all those who believe. And so as we consider these words from Jeremiah this morning, we can all see that the Lord shares his covenant with those whom he loves. Out with the old and in with the new. In our Old Testament lesson today, Jeremiah preaches to the exiles of Babylon to the remnant of Israel. In these words, he reminds them of God's love and God's promise to restore to them that which they've lost. But first, God has decided to do something that is unthinkable at the time. God has decided to get rid of the old covenant and establish with them a new covenant. Jeremiah writes, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like, the old, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. The old covenant wasn't working. And because Israel failed to follow the promises that they made to God so many times in the Old Testament, God was forced to rain down his wrath on his children. You see, the Old Covenant was based on the law of God. The people's words and actions to this covenant were bound by blood the same blood that Moses sprinkled on them and on the ark in Exodus. And the people of the Old Testament had to show their faith by doing the works that was required for them from the law. 
But the problem with this was that the people's hearts were tainted by the disease of sin. And sin was in direct conflict with God's word and God's law. Because of sin, the Old Testament was filled with many times or situations that God's people were in open rebellion against him and against his law. See, this is why God sent Babylon. And this is why we find the people of our Old Testament in exile today. The law of God is good and wise. But to those who are perishing, the law has become a burden. Sin has twisted our hearts and forced us all to turn against the law. Apart from God, we cannot fulfill the law perfectly. And we all find ourselves perishing. We are gossipers and slanderers. We hate those who don't listen to us, and we envy those who have more than us. We get angry with God when he doesn't give us what we want, and we don't turn to God when we fear the days ahead. We put our faith and trust in ourselves rather than God and his word. So as we continue our days sojourning this wilderness of the world, our journey becomes harder and harder to bear, and our burdens begin to suffocate us into despair. But God today has offered us a breath of fresh air, air not tainted by the sickening aroma of sin. Here in the church, you have been given the sweet-smelling scent of the gospel. Here in the church, God has come to remind you of his promise. And here, you have come to learn about the new covenant that God promised to establish with the exiles in our text. However, this new covenant is not like the old. In this covenant, God seeks to bring life to the faithful and hope to the lost. In this covenant, God promises forgiveness. Jeremiah even writes at the end of our text, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. When I was in seminary, I took a class called Pentateuch. And one day in this class, we were going over covenants in the Old Testament. Now, did you know that when two parties made a covenant during the times of the Old Testament, this covenant was made by cutting animals in half, spreading them out, and walking, both parties, walking in between them. You see, this was a sign to each party that if one party broke that covenant, what was done with the animal would be done with them. And so in order to cut a covenant Blood had to be shed. And today, God has come to remind you of the blood that was shed in order to make this new covenant for you. Today, God comes to remind you of the blood of Jesus, which was shed for you on the cross. Jesus' blood, the cross, was given to you as a reminder of God's undying love for you. In this love, God has given to you the hope of forgiveness. And where there is forgiveness, there is life and salvation. Through the blood of Christ, God has separated you from your sins and all that blemishes uh, all, and all of the blemishes of the actions of our past. Through this new covenant, 
God has made you into a new creation and has created for you a new heart. Dear saints, God has not left you to bear your burdens alone. He knows the sins that you carry on your back. He knows the problems that you bear around your neck. And as we await his coming, and as we sojourn through this world like exiles who have been taken out of their land, God comes to remind you this day that he is still here. He has not abandoned you. And today, God comes to give you his word just like he said he would in our Old Testament lesson. Jeremiah writes, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least to the greatest. Today God has put his word on your foreheads and on your hearts. He has established a new covenant with you by giving you the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of faith. And through Jesus Christ our Lord, you have been given the strength you need to love God and love your neighbor. No longer are we a people under the old covenant. Instead, we have been born through Christ into a new covenant. And so as we take our breath of fresh air this morning, let us all remember the love and mercy that God continues to show to each and every one of you. And let us look to the hope of the cross, the very foundation of our faith today. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We continue by singing our canticle, the Song of Zechariah.
rise for prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in these Lenten days, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, to write your word on our hearts, that we might know you as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless and sustain Matthew, our synodical president, David, our district president, Michael, our circuit visitors, our pastors, our principal, our teachers, and all of our church workers. Grant that they may faithfully proclaim the gospel message. And we ask also that you'd bless the missionaries that we sponsor and those who are proclaiming the gospel both near and far, especially JP and Amy in Cambodia, Deaconess Caitlin Warden de Ramirez in the Dominican Republic, and Reverend Roger James in the Philippines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. Help us not lord our authority over one another, but humbly serve one another in our homes, our community, and our congregation, as Christ has so humbly served us. We pray for your blessing upon our congregation, all of our members, all those gathered here, and especially this day we pray for Mike and Jerry Essig and family, Dwayne Greening, Dorothy Pankratz, Fred and Karen Peeplow and family, Jackie Mast family, and Linda Steinke. Bless us all with strong faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look in mercy upon all those whom you have given earthly authority. Guard them from temptation to lord it over us improperly, that they might faithfully serve according to your good and gracious will. Protect and defend all those who are of service in our community. Bless, we pray, the men and women who serve in our military, including Alex Root, Allison Blake, James Virgi, Joseph Schaefer, and Mitchell Carter. Be with all those who serve us in our local community, our police, our firefighters, our emergency service workers, and our health care workers, who, like your son, are often called on to lay down their lives for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing upon the work of ministry here among us. We especially pray for our Stephen ministry, our grief share ministry, our school, and our work among youth and children, for our LWML and Altar Guild and Ladies League, for our Men's Network and Lutheran Layman's League. Bless the work that you have done here among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing upon Pastor Yeager and his family. We ask that you'd keep them safe and guard them in, during this time of transition. Give them success in the, the continued ministry that, they, that you have called them to down in Louisiana. We pray that you'd grant them peace and patience even during this time. We pray also, Lord, that you'd be with the uh, congregation they are going to, that they may be blessed through the work that is done there, and be with us also, this congregation. Remind us constantly that you will be with us and you will guide and direct all that we do for the good of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your only begotten Son learned obedience through what he suffered, we pray that you would bless, sustain, and relieve all those who suffer in our midst, all those who suffer in any way in mind, body, or spirit. We especially lift before you this day Addie Scheffler, Amanda Clark, Amy Manti, Barbara Mall, Connie Schmidt, Delia and Denise McClintock, Dave Knuth, Don Hutter, Fernie Rance, Jean Mort, Jim Walters, Kathy Karnick, Laura Lesher, Laurel Schornhorst, Lori Almer, Mary Panzika, Miro Versick, Nancy Duke, Nathan Gherkin, Sally Knuth, uh, Sharon Brook, also Andrew Meyer, Aubrey Hamby, Austin Arndt, Kate Reed, Christine Lowmaster, Donald Morgan, Ginger Nurkala, Grace Gherkin, Jackie Klepper, Jim Russell, Marion Gherkin, Paula Hicks, Phil Oberhaus, Rebecca Robleski, Rose Mosel, and William Mall. 
Grant them health and healing according to your will, and most especially, keep them strong in their faithfulness toward you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, you have delivered our souls from death, our eyes from tears, and our feet from stumbling. Comfort all those who mourn, especially this day, we pray for Fred, Knuth, and all of the family of Sally, whom you have called home to her heavenly glory. Grant that they may not grieve as others do who have no hope, but keep their eyes fixed on the great victory that Jesus has won over sin, death, and the grave, that they may look forward to that uh, joyful reunion one day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, dear Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. 